And we are live on the first news. It's the Heart of Poland show, and I've decided to disperse with usual convention and doing some boring introduction. Right with me we have, and it's this way, in fact, I have to point this way, uh, Artur Racicki. Did I say that right, Artur? Racicki? Yes, Artur Racicki. Yes! Yeah. I practiced about 55,000 times to get it right, because I have this embarrassing habit of, of uh, misspeaking uh, people's surnames, which is embarrassing for me. Uh, and on my left, I have Patrick. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I got say, say. Yeah, so Arthur, um, we met each other, I think, about a year ago, a year and a half ago, and you were telling me about what you were doing, and the list was getting longer and longer, and I, I started <laughs> to get to this embarrassing point where I felt like a like a like a poorly performing human being because I wasn't doing as much as you. Having researched for this interview, I'm super super excited about talking to you because you're doing so many different things guys you are watching the heart of poland program this is where we talk to fascinating people leading fascinating lives in the fascinating country of poland the first thing i need you to do is subscribe to the first news which is the premier english language channel uh, for news about poland um proper in-depth reporting on what's going on in poland some really fascinating stories they've got these awesome pictures of the modern Inn fortress which has got this um viral art graph graffiti on which i highly highly recommend so you can go and look at the articles on thefirstnews.com and find out more there but today we're going to be talking to artur now of course artur you've strategically positioned yourself with panclex and i can't see what the other poster is is this your was this your childhood um is something you watched as a kid so first of all uh, these are books of uh uh, already like seven years old, uh, Panklek, there are three, three stories by Jan Jeffa, uh, one of my favorite uh, writers. And there were also uh, movies in cinema and they were like amazing in 80s with, uh, you know, space, traveling in space, just, just amazing movies, like never ending story. You can compare uh, probably to... Guys, have, like have you watched Panklex? I watched a little bit on YouTube. It is utterly terrifying stuff. But um, I hear <laughs> that your your good uh, friend Paul Webster, who we've interviewed for this program as well, has been saying apparently Panclex is going to be made into English, which is a pretty terrifying thought. Uh, <laughs> And one exclusive, but we have another exclusive through this interview. We're going to talk about that later. But I want to get to the quick fire round. I have prepared for you, Artur, five difficult, slightly weird questions. And guys, you can um, you can write in the chat. Hello, Anita. Hello, Kashka. Hello, Mache. Hello, Paul. Hello, Carol. You can write in the chat your answers to these questions. Um, Artur, please describe Poland in one word. Freedom and space. That was three words. You got to pick yeah. one of those, not and. Yeah. A space. What does space mean to you? Space means places. You know, uh, I love Poland. I love traveling. I've been to fifty-eight countries so far, but I've been also in hundreds, hundreds of cities and villages and places in Poland, and I am always looking for spaces. Yes, yeah? so there are, there are places that I just love and I feel free. Uh, and I need space to feel free. So if I go to Polish mountains, I have some spots that I just love to come back and, you know, to uh, relax and just have a great time. Do you ever get this feeling that I have sometimes when I come back to Poland from a trip abroad and I'm like, ah, oh, it's good to be back, man. Yeah, a relief. Yeah, you have a, your place. Although... That's my place. I've been, as I said, seven years abroad in amazing places but whenever i come back to poland i just feel great Maciek is watching us from sydney kasha is watching us from the uk and anita from chicago guys you can let us know where you're watching do you get that feeling the same feeling that Artur has described um where is, where is your favorite polish place question number two well extremely difficult question but I let's know. say if i choose one it's also related with uh, a space and um uh, you know, uh, there is a place, a valley of five pounds. It's quite commercial. Valley of five pounds is in Polish mountains. So you have five pounds covered by Tatra mountains, high mountains. So ah. you, you can imagine what you can get from being next to ponds, like lakes, and huge, huge mountains, which are one kilometer higher from the place where you are. So it's, it's amazing. Guys, this is one of my secret guilty things, which is I've never really spent very much time in the Tatras. Uh, I know you go there, Artur, because I was looking at your Facebook. So, uh, ooh, shame on me. Um, Artur, this is one of my favorite questions. If you were king of Poland, what would you change? Hmm. 
Or I what one, keep... one law? One law. I would transfer more uh, money from the central budget to local budgets. Yeah, decentralization. Nice. Why? Because it's already quite decentralized, isn't it? Voivodes are pretty independent. You know, if you look at the moment when we have this COVID situation, uh, you, can, you kind of uh, see how local governments are struggling. You know, they are very sensitive if they get uh, uh, um, uh, less taxes. They're really struggling with the local budgets. So it's actually my observations from, from recent two months. And I think uh, we need to make them more strong. And, uh, you know, um, yeah, that's, that's my idea. Guys, I don't know about you, but Arthur has given a really, really sensible answer to that question. I was expecting him to say something about, I don't know, uh, painting buildings more attractively. Cash has written, that's a good question. I think that's a pretty good answer. Uh, question number four, if you had to share a prison cell, uh, I won't mention what you've been uh, charged with, with one other Polish person, dead or alive, doesn't matter who they are, who would it be? You have to spend a long sentence with that one person, so you're going to be together for a long time. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Usually, man sits in the cell with a, another man because that's how it works. So we have fifty percent of population left. Um, I don't want to take my family member with me, but you know, it's kind that kind of question. Yeah, maybe I will took my I don't know my my kids, my wife, you know, like family. I, it's 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 too difficult. Um, just one person. Yeah, if it wasn't maybe, a family maybe, member. Maybe I would take Marek Kaminski, the explorer. Um, he's he's not only explorer, he's a physician, he's a mathematician, he's a philosopher. So probably if I would, you know, spend 10 times in prison, I would need to talk with somebody. And he's following, I would say, the same principles as uh, myself. So he... he He's trying to fight, fight the climate change. He's trying to uh, uh, build a better world. He, 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 uh, he's fighting for a sustainable world. So Marek Kaminski would be probably one of my favorites. Awesome. We've had a question here. Are you going to answer the questions from the comments? Yes. If you want to ask a question, match a mat, then uh, you can do, my friend. Uh, okay. And then final uh, tricky, tricky question. Let us know who you would spend your prison, your prison cell perfect poll that's actually a pretty good way of putting it, uh, would be. And then finally, uh, Artur, a place in Poland you haven't been to yet, but you should do. And I think this could this could be the first time that maybe I'll, you'll have been everywhere because you do travel a lot. Uh, so there is one place. Um, so uh, it's a uh, it's a castle. Um, uh, Henczynski, I guess, uh, which was built by the Queen Bona like in 16th or 17th, 17th century next to Kielce so I haven't been there it's an amazing place and that's on my list to go now so guys uh, I'm getting I'll just like give it a super specific I just I just always say Szczecin uh, I have actually been no no I haven't, I haven't been Szczecin I haven't been to really Zam to Zamek Chęciński Zamek Chęciński all right we'll have to we'll have to google that in a second so um how busy are you on a scale of one to ten right now Artur uh, 10 if you compare uh, my lifetime uh, because of the COVID uh, I became uh, so busy that it's just unbelievable I'm yeah. working uh, every day uh, 10 to 12 hours uh, because the time is demanding um, there are so many challenges at the moment but there are so many chances at the moment to scale the businesses in these difficult times so I'm doing everything to not lose uh, the momentum. Let's just give people an idea because you've got uh, people from around the world watching right now. Uh, let's just give people an idea of just how many things you do because it's kind of, as I explained at the start, qu quite freaky. You've got so many different projects on the go, including one exclusive story, which I think you're going to reveal for the first time publicly today with the Heart of Poland. We love exclusive stories. Uh, Artur, just take us through social Wi-Fi, CDA. You've got a marketing agency as well, I believe, and a number of other really exciting things you do. So just try and walk us and talk us through those things in a, in a top line way. Mm -hmm. Okay, so 
very quickly. So I'm running a social media agency for 10 years. So this is agency, probably it's, uh, it's very easy to imagine what an agency does, works with clients. I'm running uh, a project called Impact the Future, which is very exciting because that's a project where I'm meeting other people who are doing uh, social impact businesses innovations and I'm promoting them. So I'm doing kind of what you actually do, uh, but with uh, tar targeted audience. Uh, from the business perspective, I'm, um, I'm running a couple of companies, uh, other companies like startup companies, innov innovative companies. Cydia is doing smart city, solar uh, powered furniture like solar benches, uh, trash cans, even hand sanitizers, which is a new product that we launched because of COVID. So we needed some new product for this time. So automatic hand sanitizer. So I put my hand in the, in the little ring and I yeah. said my hands. And presumably this is something that you were going to see popping up around. This is this is the new normal, as they say. This is new normal and we do it in a specific way because it's solar powered. So you don't need to uh, pl plug it into the grid. It's just working uh, auto autonomously. Yes, so it's it's a great product. And actually, it's a good seller at the moment, the best seller of, of Cydia. Uh, as you know, I... City councils and things? Yes, yeah, city council, offices, shopping malls, that, 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 uh, every, every place where there is a huge traffic, actually. Yeah. It's hard to believe that you don't have to use just the old elbow move as you put the... Yeah. You know, it's, uh, yeah. no, no more of that. You just put your hands in and it's like a Dyson thing. It just cleans your hands. That's awesome. That's so cool. But you guys were doing other ecological solar-based things. So you've got the bench with the recharging and all the rest of it. But sorry, I've interrupted you, so please carry on because that's not no. the extent of everything after does. No, so you, you know my, about my uh, other business, Social Wi-Fi. I'm not running it anymore because your other guest, uh, Paul Webster, is the head of Social Wi-Fi. I was running it for seven years. And uh, now we have new boards with uh, great uh, uh, great people, which is Paul, Carol, and Kuba. And they are running this business. And they actually started to run the business in these difficult times. Yes. Because social Wi-Fi uh, is targeting, um, is, is working for hotels, shopping malls, and restaurants. And you can imagine they are all closed. I mean, they are reopening now all over the world. But they, they, it, it, it was too difficult. Uh, months for for guys so i was trying to support them but they are very creative so they uh, kind of uh create a new project zostań w pl uh zostań w polsce a so website stay in where, poland. yeah stay in poland so uh a, a website where you can find locations in the mountains uh sea masury big cities where you can spend your holidays so it's about promoting staying in poland uh, for holidays 2020. Yes, because we have so many nice places, locations. There is no need to travel every year, you know, to 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 some fancy uh, places around the world because we have so many pressure um, uh, uh, places in uh, precious uh, places in Poland. That's so uh, that, that up. Is that .pl? Zostań w .pl. Yeah, so there you go, guys. There's the link. You can go and have a look at that. And this is enabling me if I live in. You need to change the link because it's just an v dot pl. It's shorter. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oops. What no worries. And, we, and 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 there is a fan page, uh, Facebook com slash Zostan VPL. Uh, that means so, stay in Poland. We've got a comment here. COVID gave a lot of people opportunities to stop, think, and actually focus on getting stuff done, which is a very astute observation. Arto, how has this? You've already talked about how it's impacted you in terms of work, loss of opportunities, the businesses having to adapt, change, and maybe even actually make more money than before. How? What positive can you draw from the last two months of the, all of the stress and the strain? Mm -hmm. I think people are getting more sensitive about the place of subjects that I am involved in. It's just climate change. Uh, it's just uh, uh, being uh, responsible for our families, for the future uh, of our kids. Because, you know, if you look at the basic problems, COVID is not the biggest challenge that we will face in the future. Let's look at the water problem in, in Poland. Yes, we really are struggling with the a fresh uh, access to fresh water. We don't um, have the infrastructure to handle uh, uh, fresh water in the future. So this is something people start to talk about. Like three or four years, we start to talk about 
uh, smog and their next steps, actions uh, were, uh, are starting and we are improving uh, our lives thanks to public de debate. So I think this is very important that we started to think about not only working, you know, uh, eating and sleeping, but also about our future, which is great. And I will add something to that because I told you I'm working on a new project and I will tell you today, and that's first time in public that I'm saying that. So imagine in Poland, we have a startup called Fairwater, which is a, 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 a station that is desalinating the salt water into, and it's changing the salt water into fresh water. And it's not targeted uh, for countries like Poland, although you can use it, of course, at the uh, at the sea coast uh, in in summer. But it's targeted to uh, sub-Saharan African countries and uh, South Asian countries, because two billion people globally do have access to drinking water, which is uh, um, uh, which is actually dirty, and it's. Uh, and it's contaminated, yes? So we are uh, 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 working on this project because we want to solve one of the biggest, if not the biggest problem that we are facing uh, on the earth. And this is something you've been working on for how long? Well, it's actually over a year. It's like one and a half year, but it's, you have it's, a, it's a long project. It's already in production. Yeah, we, we, we were working, we have uh, like prototypes of small parts of the system and now we are building the prototype. Uh, but my uh, partner who is Scottish, uh, Alan Smith, uh, actually invented this uh, idea and was reg registering uh, a patent 10 years ago. So um, he started it, but uh, there, was no, it, there was no good timing 10 years ago for this project. So uh, we started to do it, let's say, from the scratch, but we, with some, you know, uh, uh, work that he has already done uh, 10 years ago. I'm, I'm just seeing Artur just morphing in the next kind of 10 year period into uh, the kind of Polish Elon Musk. Maybe we could finally get someone a, a, of that stature. That would be absolutely fantastic. Uh, so hang on. This is um, this is something that um, you could be rolling out. What's it called again? Fairwater.tech. Fair Actually, yes, we are launching the website today, so it's also exciting. But we already have a website, a Facebook uh, fan page. So it's uh, Facebook. Yeah, I exactly. That's that's good. So it will be working in a couple of hours. And the Facebook page is facebook.com slash Fairwater. This is always one of the things about is it there's no lack of water it's just lack of drinking water it's, uh, yeah. this, this is exciting stuff Artur how on earth do you balance all of these boards and people report and thing there's the sheer volume of information plus you're a dad of three if I remember yes dad of three yeah actually when you when you have kids uh, you you are becoming uh, a better organizer because yes. <laughs> you probably yeah. know that already. If you have kids, you need to really uh, balance your time between business and family. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, the, 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 the time is limited, so you just need to make any use of it. And uh, in my opinion, I, I just don't want to go through life like with, with nothing. So I decided to work on projects who are social responsible, who are, that have social impact. Because, you know, I was always between like a dreamer, I wanted to study astronomy or a kind of person who wants to help people like I wanted to be a doctor. So that was in the past. Then I had a, a long period of uh, st uh, online startups, tech startups. But at the moment, since like two and a half year, I'm mostly focusing on social impact uh, businesses, not only my, my own businesses, but also I'm supporting other other uh, businesses that uh, that I know and that that need help. So if there is somebody watching this video and is doing a uh, social impact business, I'm happy to help. Uh, we've got a comment here from uh, Matt, hey, Matt saying he's got great workers, probably. I've seen that Webster. I mean, he's a, he's a tough one. You've got to watch that one. I keep an eye on him, Arthur. Yeah, we, we should we, we should we should link the interview that you have because it was great. Yes, Paul Webster. I'm a, it, it's just amazing that I can work with such a people as Paul Webster. Imagine guy who was running a, a company which was competition for social Wi-Fi, 
uh, we had a good chemistry. We talked to each other and I convinced him. Uh, he, I didn't even need to convince him to come to Poland, you know, and to work in Polish startup, which has global aspirations. So it's great to have him here in Warsaw and he just loves Warsaw. And we have some uh, common, uh, you know, interests as well. We love sport, we love football. So it's really good to spend uh, time with with Paul. So uh, in the ecosystem that I have with the companies, there are about 50 people. So managing 50 people means you need to do it um, systematically. You ask how I doing, uh, how, how I'm doing it. So every morning I have these 30 minutes calls with each company, with each team, and we are planning, we are reporting, and uh, we are actually meeting uh, a lot via, you know. Uh, video yeah I see a comment here. very impressed and then there's a comment from a paul saying i'm feeling emotional hearing this well uh I, um Artur, i wasn't planning to ask this question but do you thank your staff often or often enough not often enough i would say i'm i i'm struggling with that but yeah. i'm very grateful uh, i'm thanking uh, but it's it's not i'm not a person that is just you know uh thanking enough uh for what I get, because I have wonder, wonderful people that I'm working with, and I would not be here uh, if not the team that uh, is next to me. Guys, I, I got slightly emotional as well, actually, if I'm being honest, because uh, I don't really thank people that help me enough. And if we all just thanked one person this week for what they've done to help us achieve something else in our organization, a team, or just in our family, uh, it's free. Gratitude is free. It's uh, it's definitely a product that doesn't get sold enough. So maybe we can inspire someone. Go out now, right now, and just write someone and say, hey, by the way, I'm grateful that you did that. Uh, I, I know can, I can say now, thank you, guys. I'm, yes. really, I'm really happy to work with you all. Um, plenty of social impact opportunities in Poland. Plastic, paper, water, all in need of drastic uh, improvement. Water in Poland mainly due to mismanagement, outdated farmer water wastage and resource management practices. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's so much potential in Poland. There's a lot of legacy issues with the way the country was up until relatively recently mismanaged. You're not talking about a Western European country. That's, you know, in the case of the UK, has had hundreds of years of, of careful management. Um, by one government or another, it's um, this is something a little bit different. Uh, also, I want you to imagine that I'm the potential Paul Webster of the future, an employee perhaps coming to Poland. You want to persuade me to come to Poland, or let's just say um, a CEO of a company, and he's thinking about like you know locating in Europe. Uh, how would you sell Poland to me uh, from a business perspective, from a social perspective? putting it all together if you wanted to bring someone to the country. How did you sell it to Paul? Did you just show him a picture of some of the local residents? Or did you tell him about the fantastic football? Or was it just the price of beer? I think all three of those things uh, would be attracted to Paul. What, what was it that sold it? And how would you sell Paul? We didn't have the best start because I meet, met him like uh, three years ago when he came to Poland and uh, he wanted to meet with me. And I asked him a question. Could you please stop using social Wi-Fi as a phrase on your website because it's breaking the law? And he <laughs> said, "Oh, <laughs> so that was kind of uh, first um, uh, first meeting." But yeah, Paul was coming to Poland on a regular basis because he was um, uh, he, he 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 had a Polish girlfriend and he was traveling to see. Polish uh, football games, Polish national team football games. So he was really traveling back and forth. So it was easy because he already knew Warsaw. He has been here five times before. So uh, it was easy. But it, and say, try and persuade someone who doesn't really, yeah. maybe doesn't even think about Poland. Persuade me to come to Poland and invest in Poland. So, you know, we have really good uh, uh, tax system. I mean, the taxes are low. Yeah, so from perspective of, I mean, if you are running just like a uh, uh, small, very small business, it's maybe uh, not as good as in UK because you have this ZUS, which is quite high. But if you run like a, a middle or small company uh, with like 10, 15 minutes, the, 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 the taxation is very good in Poland. So that's the first thing. The other thing, we have a lot of time, lots of talents. And you know the cost, for example, of developers uh, is much lower than in um, Western Europe. So it's very talented people, 
that uh, have a lot of uh, you know um, energy to develop to work very talented people I, I mean I've been to so many places I even came back now recently from from Boston Massachusetts when I've spent some a few months with family so you know uh, we, we we do not uh, sometimes think how good people we have here in Poland yeah oh, of course and we have great universities um, we have great country to, uh, to 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 travel to spend time free time which is also important yes when you when you live in Singapore it's so difficult to spend time uh, you know uh, to go to forest or uh, to find some nice uh, spots uh, to relax uh, I've, I've just, I was I raised my eyebrows when you said about taxes because I think this is the first time in my life I've ever heard uh, someone owning mul- or, or or with uh, shares and uh, ownership of multiple businesses say that the Polish tax system is uh, is attractive compared to other because everybody's complaining about taxes. But if you compare really to uh, many countries like Scandinavian countries, you know, even Germany, I think we have a better system. Wait, you mean that people in Poland complain too much, Artur? <laughs> we are a country of people very happy and not complaining. <laughs> he almost said that in a convincing way. And yet, <laughs> it's true. Complaining does seem to be a Polish national sport, but I can also complain at Poland and say that, in fact, it's it's not exclusive to Poland. Poland Polish people complain about complaining. Um, but as you've said, there's so many positives here. So uh, uh, the guy who wrote about the tax system, maybe you've been persuaded. Uh, maybe you can uh, uh, let us know and do some comparing there. So uh, horrible system. Right, Andrzej. Well, there are there is a lot of bureaucracy, but Arthur, you've been around the world. Um, you your companies sell around the world as well. Is Polish bureaucracy worse than other countries? I mean, German bureaucracy is pretty horrific, isn't it? It is, but yes, the bureaucracy in Poland is quite bad. I would say we have uh, we have uh, there is we don't have too many online systems that are working really perfectly. Yes, so there is a we are not Estonia. Uh, which has, you know, a very flexible uh, system. Uh, we have a lot of people employed in uh, in, uh, in in like Urząd Skarbowy, yes, taxation office. Uh, too many, uh, and it's also because of the technology that we are using. It's it still needs to be um, uh, modified. So I, I agree with the bu- bureaucracy. I agree with that one. We have a we have a bad bureaucracy in Poland. So, so why wouldn't you want to go and you know set up in Estonia and set up a company in fifteen minutes or however long it is? And why? Because all your companies are Polish spukazos. I understand that. So limited liability. Yeah. We are transferring one now to Spuka Akcina, so uh, incorporate. Uh, but yes, Spuka Zo. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's always a temptation to um, you know uh, optimize costs and optimize everything as an owner, which is entirely understandable. Um, everybody has an eye on that. Uh, wouldn't setting up in Estonia be easy for you? Is there is there something patriotic about paying into? Yeah, the- absolutely. There is something patriotic about this. You know, even sometimes some of the companies are, uh, for example, um, uh, uh, taking some grants. So if you take grant and you if you are uh, like employing people who uh, finished Polish universities, so the I mean, it's free of charge in Poland, basically, to finish university, which is also a, uh, something very good if you are planning to move with family. You don't need to pay, like, for MIT, uh, like, <laughs> half million of dollars during your uh, studies. You have it for free at very good uh, technical universities in Warsaw, Krakow, Wrocław, Lublin. So uh, it's it's for free. So I think when I'm taking some advantage from being in Poland, uh, I should pay taxes in Poland. Amen to that, brother. I'm, I'm totally down with that. Uh, you won't see me optimizing uh, profits like that. So um, you've you've been in the USA talking about MIT. You have recently came back from Boston. What did you learn there and what would you like to um, uh, maybe see in Poland a little bit more? For example, I quite like the Americans' optimism, uh, the kind of can-do attitude. Um, they're just relentlessly positive. It feels like maybe we could do with a little Davka, a little uh, insertion of positivity, uh, sometimes in Poland. What do you think? I love I love Boston. I love Cambridge, Massachusetts. Um, you know, I've been to a place where you... Where I lived 15 minutes walking from MIT and 15 minutes walking from Harvard University. So, uh, and I was there uh, taking part in the 
biggest uh, clean tech uh, uh, acceleration in, in, in the world, in US, but in the world as well, Greentown Labs. So imagine meeting every day 300 people who have the same uh, focus, mindset, uh, who, who do not eat, let's say, meet, travel by bike to work, you know, it's just amazing. And working on businesses that are trying to revolutionize uh, the planet. And what I've er learned, what is the, my biggest um, uh, lesson from, from being there is that I realized uh, how practical Americans are. Uh, so, so just to give you an example, I was talking with people from MIT and Harvard, and they were telling me, "Why do you people? Why do you like in Europe invest so much money in if you look at the uh, social impact investment into software companies? Software is not solving any problem. Artificial intelligence will not solve every problem. So, people on MIT and Harvard are focusing a lot on hardware because using hardware you can clean the air." You can uh, transform the ener uh, energy system. You can help the agriculture. You can make them uh, it uh, more ef uh, efficient. So that was something that was really eye-opening. So I decided to like put more effort into those, you know, hardware uh, um, uh, elements. Like if you want to desalinate the wa the water, you don't use social media for that. You need to have like insulation. You need to pump the water from the sea. You need to uh, desalinate it. You need to, you know, uh, make a big construction. You need to use, you need to use containers to transport it. And this is something that is real. And uh, this is real business, not only artificial intelligence and you know SaaS online platforms. This is this is social impact in Europe. Uh, uh, the, 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 ven the uh, venture capital invest in social, uh, investing in social impact businesses are investing in software platforms, which is stupid. And I understood that in US. Yeah, I love it. Uh, and as someone who spent quite a long time in services, uh, I totally feel your need uh, for products because they're physical. You can actually look at them. You can actually buy them. It's fantastic. You mean the world doesn't need another marketing agency? I'm, I'm amazed. <laughs> oh, of course we need, but you know, it's too much. Yeah. We, should, we should now focus on some big challenges that we have. Yes, we need to focus on water, plastic, air, you know, temperature is going up, which will cause many damage to the planet. And we need to focus on solving basic problems. We need to do it uh, in Poland, uh, for example, uh, um, energy transformation, because we are mostly using electricity made from coal. We need to transform it. And we need to get some energy from water, wind, biomass. You know, this, these are challenges that are interesting. Got lots of comments here. Social attitudes to service, huge gap to be bridged here. There's a lot we can learn from other people. There's also a lot that Poland can bring to the world. Arto, we've talked about social Wi-Fi. Uh, we've talked about Cedia, which I'm, I like Cedia the most out of all those companies. This is cool. Uh, uh, we've also talked about social Kiwi um, and Freshwater. Is there anything we haven't talked about? How many more fingers have you got to stuff into pies my friend it's impossible at least two but uh, <laughs> uh, there are some projects that i'm you know involved as a uh, as like like uh, i'm bootstrapping it with let's say friends so it's a very small um, uh, project at the moment and we are trying to scale it so we have uh, with football challenge app which is a app that is helping uh, the trainers to and, and and the footballers to to you know to to get the sparring partners, let's say. So this is something that is already in App Store in and Android Store. So this is something uh, that I do. Um, I'm working on something which is very important now on the with a, with a team of people on the project that we will have a platform uh, that will do a matching between social impact startups, social impact. Uh, investors and uh, social impact ecosystem. So people who are doing, you know, um, uh, accelerations, mentoring and stuff because social impact uh, business and innovations are very important for me. And there is a lack of tool, online tool this time, uh, but for uh, social impact startups.
Awesome. Okay. Is that and uh, is that public yet, or is that something in progress? No, no, no. That's that's an idea that uh, okay. that is uh, developed now. Maybe for all those determined future Polsky Elon Musks, uh, you need to keep uh, following Artur. You can follow him on Impact the Future uh, on his Facebook as well and through all the companies he's mentioned. Artur, with regret, it's 35 minutes. I feel like we've been talking for 10. I can't believe uh, it. We didn't really talk about many of the subjects I like to touch on. So maybe we can uh, call back in a couple of years when some of these projects have flowered and all of a sudden you're delivering fresh water, fresh drinking water to billions of people, which is uh, just a fantastic project. Uh, Arto, if you could go back and talk to your five-year-old self, you know, travel back in time, what would you say to five-year-old Arto Rachitsky? Hmm. Go and help people, other people who are struggling. Guys, sometimes you don't need to add anything. I think that's uh, that's a wonderful thing. I all agree with that. Anjay, let's do stuff. I'm in. Uh, please don't go off the rails like Elon Musk. Well, <laughs> uh, we haven't. Um, I've seen Elon Musk and Joe Rogan, and I hope that today's interview with Arthur was something slightly different, slightly more professional. Um, maybe a couple of million less views, but nonetheless, uh, I think we can say that Arthur Rochiski is a man to watch. Arthur, thank you very much for joining us. I really appreciate it. You can drop links uh, into the chat. You can follow Arthur uh, online. Impact the Future is his Polish language uh, vlog and podcast. Uh, with fascinating people. It's no rival to Heart of Poland, don't worry. Uh, but nonetheless, worth checking out. I enjoyed uh, watching some of your interviews as prep for this. Arthur, thank you very much. Thank you, Patrick. It was a pleasure. And thanks for having me in your program. I really appreciate it. So we'll say goodbye to Arthur and remind you guys that you can check out thefirstnews.com. It is the premier English language channel. Uh, you can check it out, The First News, on Facebook and YouTube, uh, LinkedIn, I think, and Twitter. And you'll be getting the interviews about Poland, uh, in-depth uh, analysis pieces. It's just a really easy to read interview. We had some good stuff, good interview. Thank you very much, guys. You can also help out by trying to take our message about the amazing things that are happening to Poland, the fascinating conversations we've had with fascinating people leading fascinating lives in the fascinating country of Poland. This is on you, my friends. Please do share this episode and please do go and check out some of the other fascinating episodes we've had. For example, Arthur talked about the interview with a um, uh, chap called Paul Webster. Uh, Paul gave us, I think, 10 things that he disliked and liked about Poland. That interview, I'll, I'll, I'll stuff into the uh, comments or the edit here so that you can watch it as well. Make sure you uh, follow us next week. Next week, we have a fascinating interview at 12 o'clock on Friday. Uh, I won't reveal our guest. I'll let it be a surprise. But what you need to do now is share this episode. Go back and watch the other Heart of Poland episodes we have. We interview historians, artists, thinkers, economists, poets, beekeepers, business people, people who are trying to change the world and make Poland and the wider world, just like Artur, a better place. I really do think, frankly, guys, if I'm going to be speaking honestly, I'm probably going to say that this is pretty much the number one program about Poland that's out there in the English language, because we really do try and go behind the scenes and tell you what's going on, keep you in the pulse and keep you with your eye on the heart of Poland. So thank you very much and join me again for another episode of Heart to Poland.